<laughs> well, that's an interesting way to live. I mean, you're <laughs> going to be doing some, some definitely, you know, you're going to be filing your tax, taxes at Chuck E. Cheese. I mean, oh. I hate to say that, but it's, it could happen to you. And that's okay. That's okay. I, I, I like that world. I really like that world. Uh, I yeah. wanted to say I appreciate your time with us oh, before I let you. someone I grab the you. mic. <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate you uh, and telling that story and just being here, all of you. It just, it's been a lot of fun. I, oh, I knew anything to do with Milwaukee would be good, even though I know you're not all from Milwaukee, but uh, you know, I had, a, I had such a good feeling about that. A couple more ghost stories for you yet, Emil. Okay. Uh, Chloe, are you still here? We've got uh, you up next. Yes, I am still here. Okay, thank you. What you All got right. for us? Um, okay, so I have sleep paralysis. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, so I, I've had multiple very weird experiences with sleep paralysis. Um, you know, sometimes it's like I, I just, I'm, I'm paralyzed, I wake up, I realize that it's happening and whatever, but a lot of times what will happen is I, I feel paralyzed, I'm awake, and then I start, it's almost like, you know, if your dream world starts bleeding in to your world world, and then it's like the dream world feels completely real. So I've had experiences where one time I, I thought that this cat was on my neck. This is before I had any pets. And it was like, I could feel the gravity and like the like physical, how I could feel it on my neck. I could feel the texture of its fur against my skin. I, I woke when I fully you know, got control of my body. I was like, convinced that there was this cat in my apartment, and that there's, yeah, definitely wasn't. Um, the most, well, we the one that, that the one there that has know. really stuck with me um, was it happened in like 2010, and my my aunt had just been like really horrifically murdered, and that was really on my mind. Yeah, and I I was asleep, and I I woke up and realized I was paralyzed. I woke up on my side, which was really unusual because most of the time it happens if I'm like sleeping on my back. So I woke up on my side, and then it was like all of a sudden I I felt like a a presence behind me, like two like two presences, <laughs> and um. And also before this, like, I, I definitely didn't really, I guess, believe in ghosts. But so I, I, I felt this, like, really strong presence behind me. And then I could hear this, like, talking. But it was almost like this talking that um, was sped up like a chipmunk. And it was like this, it, it was like I could hear it, but I couldn't understand it. But I knew that there was this, like, talking happening. And I felt like it might have been my aunt is is the feeling I had. And then it felt like it felt like these hands passed through my body and my entire body filled with this like incredibly cold feeling. And then they came mm -hmm. out and I woke up and I, <laughs> and I was just awake in this like in my like dark like basement apartment like oh my god like what was just here and and what do I I it's like I still don't know what to think about it so it's fascinating <laughs> though I mean it's yeah. a fascinating thing uh, it's, it's sure seems like murder tears the fabric of our world in such a way that things are able to come in or yeah. you're able to experience things, or there's an extremity of emotion that's so great that people in that state can reach us. Um, yeah. I, I think that's, I mean, all death maybe, but definitely sudden and violent death seems to have some um, power in, in yeah. our world. We're told that, I mean, those of us that, you know, I mean, I've studied the occult, I don't practice it in the dark sense, but I know that, uh, you know, there are reasons that humans have been sacrificed and, and it's certainly not meaning to uh, equate that with what you're talking about because you know what you're talking about is, is, a, is a real injury of the heart. But we know that there's power uh, in, that, in the release of a soul in that situation. 
I, I think, uh, yeah. yeah. So I don't know what that means either. It's, it's very strange that sped up talking is really interesting. It's an interesting facet of the story too. Yeah, I've had friends that I've told about that who are obsessed with aliens and are like, oh, this is a classic like alien story. Like, and I was like, okay, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> who knows? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, we're gonna, I get this feeling we might learn a lot more about the other part of the world that we don't see soon. I mean, yeah, it just seems like that's coming, but it has hasn't it seemed like it's coming for a while now? Um, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Javier, you, you've got a, I'm I'm sorry, I'm sorry to Thank cut you, it. Chloe. That's yeah. uh, it's frightening and fascinating too. You know, uh, Javier, uh, uh, Javier, you got a story for us? Yeah, I have a few, uh, but I'll I'll tell the first one that I ever experienced because um, I probably have three or four. Um, I was in middle school. I want to say probably sixth grade, and I was over at a friend's uh, birthday party at their house. It was a sleepover at his house. Uh, my friend Jason DeWitt, and there were about eight of us, maybe nine of us, um, who were over there for his birthday party, and he he's out in um, uh, Caledonia, which is a, a rural uh, village just outside of Racine, in between Racine and Milwaukee. Um, and so he he has a big backyard that is adjacent to uh, a number of farms, um, and there and we as it was dusk, uh, we started um, we decided to play uh, Ghost in the Graveyard which I don't know how many people are familiar with the game or the rules or, or if it's played differently, but just as a quick summary, the way we played it at least was, so one person was it, right? They were the ghost. And the, the, the rest of the group would stand in a circle and lock arms, right? So their arms would be locked and their backs were facing the interior of the circle. And so as the, the experience of being in the group is you can only face one direction and your responsibility is to protect the rest of the group by looking in your one direction for the one person who's hiding, right? And then at some point when the person who's hiding thinks that they can catch everybody, they jump out and run after and try to tag everybody. Um, and then as soon as somebody sees the, the ghost, the person who's hiding, they shout ghost in the graveyard and everybody runs to try to go back, back to like home base. Um, so we're playing and we played a couple of rounds and um, part of the reason we decided to play was because we had, I don't know if it was in school or if we were just talking about the, um, the role, like the, the symbology of willow trees. And so um, Jason had these two giant willow trees in his backyard um, as the, and, and we had heard at the time of them as a, uh, a native burial location. location. Oh, and so really? we were talking about this kind of in the run up of playing the game to like spook ourselves out. And so it was my turn to be the ghost after we had played a number of times already. And I was hidden um, in a spot near the house, which is where everybody was ultimately trying to get back to. And um, so all of my friends were locked up and kind of walking in the circle around the, the big backyard that he had. And just as I was getting ready to jump out from my hiding space, like at least three or four of them all shouted ghost in the graveyard at the same time, but with like a different tone of voice. Like it wasn't like, play, like one person shouted. Actually, I feel like, they might not have even shouted it at all, but I remember the tone of voice of the like scream, like, ah, like running away was not like the playful running away. And they, and they were running directly towards me. So like they hadn't seen me cause I hadn't jumped out yet. And they all came running directly towards me. And so I jumped out and basically tagged all of them except for my one like fastest friend, Ryan Sidnor. And we all got inside and like all of them were shook. They were all like, like looking at each other and they were like, what just, what just happened? Like they, and, and I remember them saying like, he's not even wearing white. And, and like all of them had seen a white figure running at them from the willow tree. And that's why they broke and somebody shouted and, and ran towards me. They didn't see me and I wasn't in white. And so we were all kind of shooken up and that ended the game. Like it was scary enough that like a bunch of middle school boys were like, no, we're not going outside again. <laughs> like, that's not, that's not going to happen. Um, 
And it was interesting because I didn't see it at all, but like it, you know, to the extent that those things can be written off as kind of like a hallucination, it was like four or five kids who all saw it at the exact same time. Um, yeah, that was it. That's a really great one. I mean, it's very cinematic, I, I, will, I will say to you. I enjoyed that. Thank you. Thank you, Javier. Thank That's you uh, terrifying. It, that, that was a scary <laughs> one. Or was it your house? Say again, Emil. Was the house an old one, or was it a newer house? Have you? Uh, it had that 1970s feel in in the panel, the wood paneling in the basement, and so I don't know exactly how old it was, but at least that's when it was kind of furnished and designed. I don't know, you know, quite. Were the when trees it, old? The trees were incredibly old. It was it was really? two of the largest willow trees I've ever seen. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, J Joni, I, I believe you got something for us too then? Uh, yeah, mine's not a personal experience or even a ghost story, but um, in news a couple of months ago in July, there were some fresh sightings of the Beast of Bray Road. So I don't know, if you, maybe you're not familiar or some people aren't familiar. It's a local legend, sort of similar to the Jersey Devil or the Mothman. So the Beast of Bray Road is like a seven foot wolfman creature. Uh, gets seen around southeastern Wisconsin. Uh, can run on four legs and also stand up on two legs. Uh, sometimes it chases, um, I think it's B-R-A-Y. Uh, it'll chase cars and jump on them. It's been seen since like the 50s. Some people think it's uh, like a werewolf and other people think it's like a, um, like a cryptic creature, like Bigfoot. So yeah, in July, this guy said he saw it twice within the same, within the same month. So be careful when you're driving down those lonely back roads in the middle of the night. You don't know what'll pop out at you. Yeah, that's totally what you should be, is careful in that situation. And actually never do it too, which is <laughs> <laughs> like, no, that's, I've, I've driven uh, a friend of mine, like I was saying, Kurt, Kurt Devine is from Milwaukee. So we'd go see his, um, his family in Waukesha and uh, you know have to drive uh, through uh, that area. So I saw the name Caledonia or Caledonia, I think it is. Uh, and I've seen, you know, small towns and, and occasionally driven through places I wish I were not at at the time. I thought I'm going to be encountering something here because it's so dark there. It's so utterly dark. And uh, I'm sorry, but it's creepy, you know, and, and I liked it in a way, but I also thought this is a good place to get murdered. It's a really good place, you know. To, you know, don't break down, don't go into somebody's house, don't. especially if they have wind chimes made out of human bones. That's, that's a direct no for me, um, you know, but uh, not that I experienced that, but I could imagine it. I could really there, I could really imagine that uh, easily. Yeah, thank you for that. I'm gonna look that up. Bray Road, okay. And then, really... I, I believe we've got what, one more story for the night uh, from Kyle. You've got something for us? Hi. Yeah, can you hear me? Yep. Hi. Okay. Hi. Uh, so I have UFO story. Cool. Um, unfortunately, it's my mom's. Um. Uh, she was not a believer. Um, okay. But she had had two experiences with UFOs. And the most significant was when she was a kid. Uh, I'm from the country and like the, the boonies country. And where, what part of the country? Uh, do you, okay, so we're, you know where lacrosse, you know where lacrosse is. Sure. Uh, about 45 minutes north of there, right next to Minnesota. But like, no one okay, gotcha. find it unless you drove them there. So like- So is this kind of near Hudson? Hudson? No. Uh, not really. No, not near Hudson. Okay. No. Gotcha. Um, okay. This uh, this happened probably around 1950, 52. Okay. Um, my mom and her sister were carrying water to their the barn, and they looked out and they saw over about a, uh, 
about half a mile away, but very visible because um, it's very hilly. Uh, on one of the pastures behind uh, the neighbor's farm, there was a disc hovering in the sky, and it was daylight. Yeah. Um, it just was there for a couple minutes, one spot, and then it just lifted and disappeared almost instantly. Interesting. And they thought, you know, wow, that's weird. Uh, yeah. But they never really brought it up. Um, and they told, you know, their friends or whatever. Well, I grew up, uh, you know, in the 90s there, uh, but we lived where the other farm is. So where the other barn was, that pasture behind the barn was our pasture. And the spot right under where the UFO was is the only spot in the pasture where trees have grown. Interesting. So, yeah, it, it's just, oh. and she, it's, that, was, that was her first of two experiences, and she's not a believer, but she clearly has had something happen to her. Um, and aside from the ghost that's in our place right now, which we, we don't really have any interesting stories, but my mom certainly did. Cool. I mean, could we see it by accident now? I mean, are you near it, possibly? Oh, the ghost here? No ghost there? No, oh, so, I mean, the, it, it, it's starting out, it's a little uh, uh, playful. It's turned on fans, it's turned off lights, it's knocked over action figures almost all of which can be explained away. I am not arguing that. But there is very eerie things that have happened so far. And a friend of mine who is very spiritual has said that uh, if you don't talk about it, things won't escalate. He also said that he did some sort of, uh, uh, not seance, um, like, uh, praying or something towards it, and he saw a kid who's playful named Michael. Uh, I said his name now, um, who likes messing with my husband. So hmm. that's I, we've just had a few little, small, odd incidences, incidences, uh, but nothing big yet. Hopefully, not really. Have you tried putting toys out and seeing if? If they're uh, welcome, we're huge nerds, so there are literally toys everywhere. So that maybe is part of it. Yeah, that, that could be a big part. Of it. Sure. Yeah, I mean, what kid, ghost or not? I mean, a ghost kid is going to love your toys. I think. You know? okay, that's, that's, that's cool. It's a good point. Yeah, I mean, that could be a part of it. Yeah, I, I like that idea. I do. I think. I think. I. I I believe something. I'm not sure if it's real or not, but I believe we are actually seeing ghosts all the time, but we just don't have the capacity to let ourselves know that we're seeing them. So we're we're seeing. I think we're seeing things all the time. We we can't allow ourselves to know we see. Sure, that Which makes a lot of sense. Great, because it makes you scared all the time. You know, in a way, it's kind of. <laughs> I mean, it's nice to think that you're really being messed with in more ways than you even understand. Yeah, thank you for that story. Thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, thank I you could for really, I could really. I wonder what the trees have to do with it. But I was wondering if there's an energy in trees that is useful to uh, non-terrestrial beings, or what we would, you know, whatever they are, wherever they hide out. Some people think they're coming out of the oceans. You know, I I, I had a cousin awesome. who uh, was a high-level Navy guy, and he told me some big secrets about stuff that goes in and comes out of the oceans. He says, stuff goes in and comes out. Stuff that I'm not supposed to talk about, but he says, stuff. And um, he died very mysteriously, unfortunately, when he tried to leave the military. But that's another story I can't tell here. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I think there's just a lot of things we don't understand or know the uh, dimension of. It's really interesting, though, isn't it? Very. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to cut in there then and say, you know, I think that's what we've got for stories for the night. And I really appreciate everybody, you know, chiming in and sharing. Yeah. You know, it's interesting stuff we got to hear. Um, yeah. And I, and I do want to thank Emil again for sharing, you know, oh. solid two hours of your time with us and all. Um, I enjoyed it. it, it you has... provided me my human contact for God knows how many weeks it will be that I will <laughs> it, be here in my uh, environment making things for you uh, that I'm in a sort of a state of complete aloneness. So I really appreciate your company. Heck yeah. I appreciate hanging out with you and seeing your beautiful faces and <laughs> your smile and your kids which was nice because it's starting to feel like there are no kids uh, and I you know I, I, I like them they're good and uh, your, your cat uh, Chloe thank you for letting me see your cat there and I saw somebody's dog I thought wow look at that dog or I didn't wait a minute there's a dog right now yes oh my gosh there's a beautiful white cat Nat that is a white cat that is a gorgeous cat and then, Emilio, you have a beautiful... I'm happy being picked up. Oh, I love that. Anybody else have any pets to show off here? Oh, my gosh. Somebody's squirming. Oh, look at that baby. Oh, very cute. Oh, my gosh. That guy with the black eye. Hilarious. Oh, he's like, Mom, what am I doing? I don't understand. Can I get down? Oh. Molly, you have to tell us the name of your dogs. This is Ada Lovelace. And oh my gosh, that's she such a is, cool um, name. She's, uh, <laughs> we have a scientist naming convention. I have Copernicus too. Oh, wonderful. Copernicus and Ada Lovelace. I love that. <laughs> Who else was there? Oh, look, uh, Jihan, that's a beautiful dog. That dog is like, I love dad. I love dad. <laughs> oh, I love these guys. Are there any more? Let me see. I'm going to go to the other window to see if we can see any more babies. Uh, yeah. Uh, you were getting a bite of something there, Molly. Look at you eating. That's nice. I, I like that. That makes me laugh. Okay. Oh my God, that's terrifying. For a second, I was like, you're a serial killer. Okay, Holly. Thank you for that. Your pet is terrifying. Right now. Did you make that guy? Chinese Zodiac, yeah. Wait a minute, you're doing what? <laughs> the, the animals of the Chinese Zodiac. This is the last one, the pig. Are you kidding me? That's so cool. What do they get? What is this for? Um, for me, I'm a, a fine a sculptor. So, yeah. That's a wonderful pig, and I love the way the pig is dressed. Can I? Do you have a tiger? Because that's the year coming. I do have a tiger, but they're all way up high on a shelf. But um, I put my website address in the chat early on. I would love to go look. Yeah, they're all, they're all on there except for this one because I have not finished with it. So that's my well, animal. <laughs> thank you. That's really cool. I'm very into the Chinese. Uh, what, what is your Chinese astrological sign? Um, I am the rooster. Oh, very good. Mm -hmm. Are you a good dancer? I hear roosters are good dancers. I used to teach step aerobics. <laughs> there you go. I guess Stuff's I real. I mean, you cannot mess with this stuff. Stuff I'm I'm totally into it. I know that's wrong, but you know, I just completely believe it. I, yeah, yeah. What what are people? I'm a tiger. I'm like a Leo tiger, with all kinds of Leo. I'm like a super cat. Um, you know, <laughs> all I am is a tiger Leo tiger tiger Leo. Uh, what about what is everybody else here? Fox. You don't know, Troy. Do you know? I, I don't know to be honest. I don't remember. I, I well, should go. Capricorn horse. It's by your birth year. Okay, I'll look it up. <laughs> okay, who else? Who? It's, okay, Don, what are you? You're the dog. That's good. Dogs are rule abiding. Are you a rule abider? Yeah, basically, yeah. I follow yeah, them. yeah, I know. I get it. No, I love dogs. Tigers and dogs are pals. I guess we like the rule abiding qualities, and they're very loyal and smart, and they're very cool. What about you, Chloe? I'm a Sagittarius horse. Holy what shit. That you're a, oh, that's fabulous. <laughs> well, that's fa You're a fire sign and a horse. I, horses are wonderful. You're not even, you're sort of like, nobody can put you, pin you down. You're too free, you're free spirited. And Sagittarians are just like storytellers. That's a fantastic thing to be. Steve, what are you? I am an Aquarian. 
from 1954. So what are you, what's your Chinese? You, you should gotta know. figure that out. You know? Figure that out. Aquarius, figure it out. Karen, what are you? I'm a fire horse and a Capricorn. You're a Capricorn fire horse. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're a badass. <laughs> like you're, you, are, you are an organizer, aren't you? Do you organize really, really well? Like yeah. desperately well? Yeah. Capricorn and fire horse. That would be a very powerful organizational sign. Yeah. Lucas, what are you? Um, I am a Gemini rat. Oh, I love, see, my daughter's a rat. I love rats. I totally <laughs> love a Gemini rat. Oh, that's very dear. Rats are incredibly dear. They're so smart and fast. And uh, are you acquisitive? Do you collect things like a, a rat will? <laughs> yes, uh, a pack rat. Very much. Very, very much. Good. Exactly. I like that. What about you, Isabella? What are you? Um, I am a Libra and I was born 2000, but I have no idea the Chinese zodiac thing. Well, we're going to have to figure that out for you. <laughs> Libra is a wonderful sign. You guys are always like you're the most attractive and you can't make your minds up. Like you can stand in the grocery aisle and just go, I don't know. Somebody help me. I can't yes. two shampoos. They're both so good. What do I do? <laughs> too much <laughs> choice. Yeah, yeah, indecision, but but also seeing the, the both sides of everything. Yeah, that's really nice. You have to look that up. Jihan, do you do you play this game? Yeah, I'm a Capricorn horse as well. Oh nice, nice. Capricorn horse. So you're also a good organizer. Uh, no, I didn't live up to that part of it, unfortunately. Okay, so where, what is it that you're good at uh, as a Capricorn? What's your thing? Because Capricorns are benevolent. Yeah, I'd say benevolent, not to toot my own horn, but that sums it up pretty well. Yeah, very benevolent beings. Okay, Devin, what about you? Uh, I'm a Leo horse. <laughs> oh, a fellow Leo and a horse. You're kind of lucky to be a, a lion horse. It sounds like a, it should be a movie starring, you know, um, somebody like, what's his name, who played, what's the guy who played in, um, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, he kind of <laughs> spouted a lot of anti-Semitic stuff at one point. But okay, he was really, yeah, it was like yeah. Leo Horse would be like a, a lion <laughs> horse, Gibson, would be like a great Mullins. movie for him before he became an anti-Semite. It would be, yeah. be like, I'd like to see that movie. It has know? to be the mullet Mel Gibson though. <laughs> the what? You know, the curly mullet Mel Gibson. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, that was the hotter Mel Gibson. Way before <laughs> we knew. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. Jay Scott, what about you? I am a tiger Libra. Oh, Libra tiger. Yeah. That's a weird um, combo to have like the fire on the back end there. Yeah. Uh, that and then to have the Libra who is very about balance. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, it works that way. <laughs> Does it? Are you a lawyer? Uh, no, I'm the I'm a chair of a department of a psychology department. So I think okay. the yeah. tiger and the Libra work together pretty well. <laughs> yeah, clearly. That's a, that's an interesting combo. Tony, you can't get away from this. You might be trying, but you have to come up with it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a I'm a Virgo. Um Virgo, and I just looked up the Chinese zodiac year. I am a, a pig, actually. Virgo pig. Virgo Very pig. cool. So benevolent, uh, and also because it's the goddess. Virgo is the goddess, but also you really must be. It must be hard for you to uh, be satisfied with your edits on your films and the things you do. Uh, sometimes the older we get, the older I get, the more I I let go of, of some perfectionism. Good. I want to keep enough perfectionism to keep quality high, but yeah. disperse with the perfectionism that, that drives me up the wall mentally. So when you're acting, because I know you act and professionally, there are scenes you've done that do you ever go, I want to do that again? Or Oh, absolutely. A, absolutely. Okay. That's the Virgo. You, you also have to feel out the room. If you're on the eighth take and you feel like the room is getting impatient with all your takes, then you, you just, you know, you hope for the best. <laughs> 
Right. You don't want to make them kill you secretly Correct. or poison you. It shouldn't be a, a, an episode of murder she wrote. Yeah, no. I get it. No, I totally, but that's cool. That's cool that you're a Virgo, fellow Vir Virgo power. I have a little like Leo in my sun or moon rising somewhere, something. That's bad. It's so bad. It's so bad to have Leo. I mean, don't you think that? It's such a, it's such a curse to be a Leo because we're so horrible, you know? We're like, it's just, I, I think. I don't know. I, I find my Leoness just obnoxious. I'm like, I want to slap myself sometimes. Um, anyway, Matt, what about you? <laughs> Who? Um, uh, bah, sheep, Aries, and... Aries, sheep. That's like sheep, sheep. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm like... Aries and pig. So. Aries and what? Pig. Pig. Oh, pig? Yep. Okay, all right. That's yep. better than being a double sheep. That's... Aries sheep would be like, oh my god, how? Yeah, I don't know. Um, Emilio, what about you? Uh, so it depends on which astrology. In Chinese astrology, I am an Earth rooster, and in um, European astrology, I am uh, Pisces with a rising sign. Uh, with my moon sign Scorpio, my rising Taurus. You really know. <laughs> I'm a Spanish gypsy, we were raised telling tarot cards and hustling people for money. <laughs> cool. That's great. When, when everything falls to shit, we're coming to your house and you're going to lead us into a new communal way of being. That, hey, you got uh, it. We'll definitely we'll survive because of you. These Thank skills you. are important. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm completely <laughs> with that. Um, Naomi, your, your pause, what are you? So I'm a Scorpio and pig. Man, Scorpios. Yeah. <laughs> you are sex gods. You are, you, I'm sorry. It's true, isn't it? You can't help it. You run, you, Scorpio <laughs> rules the junk. It rules the junk, man. It, 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 it does, it, yes. Yeah. You guys, and so Scorpio, what did you say? Oh, and a pig on that Chinese Scorpio side. pig. Yeah. I don't know what that, it would be like. I mean, I don't, I haven't done any research on I was just reading up on it. I don't know, steady, kind, well, sexy, maybe. sexy, horny, <laughs> crazy, all of that, right? All of that, which is all Smart, good. Smart, devilish, yes. <laughs> Smart, devilish, excellent. Good, good combination there. Molly, what about you? I'm a Virgo snake. Holy crap, I'm scared of you now. <laughs> It's like benevolence, but I could also kill you, you know? Like I might do you good, but I could kill you. Is that you? That's actually kind of me. Yeah. yeah, I know. Snake people, man. They're always beautiful, always cool. I stay, I'm like, okay, if you said you want butter, it's butter, you have butter. I, I'm not, you know, anything. You don't want to cross a snake. Yeah. You guys are, it has to be butter, actually. Yeah, That's no, I know. I know. My mother's a snake. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm always scared of her. Um, Romana, is it Romana? What are you? Jonas. Uh, I'm a Libra goat. I have no idea what that means. I don't either. <laughs> You're gonna have to figure that out because I think. I mean, like, I didn't know gnats either. I, there's some that I they come up and I'm like, I don't even know what that means about you. I have no idea, but it's interesting. Libra goat. So mm -hmm. there might be a decision, but I don't know what goat's all about. Mm -hmm. Hi, hi, Molly's friend. Uh, Susan, are you there? Yeah, no, Susan's gone. Otto, what are you? Okay, so my rising is Taurus, but I'm a Gemini, and I don't know my full star chart, but my mom did. And I had three that lined up with Taurus and three that lined up with Gemini. It's totally true. Definitely split between th those two. But I'm also an iron goat. So I have an air sign. Oh, that's, the, that's the movie I want to see after Lion Horse. <laughs> <laughs> so I have an air sign in my European zodiac, but I have this iron side, like earth sign, iron sign in, in my Chinese zodiac. That's cool. So yeah. I'm very open and very lofty, but also uh, 
I'll tell you you're wrong. Yeah. I can tell, <laughs> I can tell you about you. I, I got that already. <laughs> I'll I'm tell like, you. I'm completely aware that at some point you could just tell people they were like, no, that's not right. No. I but just, yeah. it's you. Yeah, it's clear. It's very, it's, it reads. And that's good. It tracks. Need that. <laughs> yeah, no, no. You're going to find out. She's going to tell you. She's not going to hold back. Yeah, that's good. What about Ashley over here? Ashley, who's checking for a ghost. Okay. <laughs> um, I am a Leo son, and for my Chinese zodiac, I'm a rabbit. You're a Leo rabbit? Yeah. I have no idea what, how Leo and rabbit combine. Me neither. <laughs> well, you're going to have to learn that. It's interesting, though. I mean, I feel for you that you're a Leo. <laughs> and then, and then uh, but at least you'll always have your hair. That's the thing. <laughs> you'll always have hair. You know, at least we always have hair. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Leo Rabbit. I don't know what that means, but I want to know. So, yeah. Um, Luke, do you, do you, will you grace us with the truth about you? I am a very, very, very much a Sagittarius. Uh, my birthday was yesterday. Oh, happy birthday. And a horse. You're, uh, Lu you're oh, that's very cool. And like uh, Chloe, who was also a Sagittarius horse. That means you might not tell the truth if you don't feel like it, right? Because Sagittarians, the truth is like this thing that might be going over here and it might be going over there. It's not really, you're storytellers, yeah. And then it's malleable. Like the board, you're very smart at it, so you don't get caught. That's really great, that's great. So you make good con men, I would think. Hmm, okay. Uh, Robert, what's the story? What are you? Hello. Hi. Hey, always great to hey. hear your voice. Uh, so I am a Scorpio ox. Oh, hell. I don't know what that means, but Scorpios. You but guys. I, I think if you combined them, it would almost look like my favorite monster of all time, which is a Catoblepus. You know, what? kind of a bul bulky body. Catoblepus is a somewhat off the beaten path monster that like in uh, ancient Greece and whatnot they would talk about. So it's kind of a... Um, you know, like an ox-like body with a super elongated neck and a head that drooped really, really low to the ground. I want to. kill you with either, to, either its poison to, breath or its death purpose. vision. Can is there a way you could send me a link to this? Uh, oh, of course, I will. <laughs> I don't know that monster, and I I pride myself on knowing monsters. You know. <laughs> oh, um, awesome! I'm super yeah, excited. No, I, I want. To, that's uh, very cool. That's a cool. Uh, I I'd be interested to know how that. It, has affected you how you feel connected to that yeah yeah I'm also, uh, and my son likes to draw them okay i want to mm -hmm. see one maybe you'll show me one that they drew wait yeah. no for sure um i see somebody whose name i do not see connected i don't know if they're person on a red couch but i don't know if they want to share hello person on red couch waving hi oh Tim. I'm a Scorpio goat. Okay. And I love your book. Thank you. Thank you, Scorpio goat, Tim. Tim, Scorpio goat. I like that, that you like my book, and I appreciate that. And Scorpios, you guys. Yeah, you're wild. You're crazy. Yeah. Oh, come on. All right, so I, so I just started dating a cancer pig. Are we compatible? There's going to be some tears, but sex will make it okay, I think. I can live with that. For you. Yeah, for you. But you're going to have to find ways for the uh, Scorpio. Was it was Scorp I mean, cancer what? Cancer pig. Cancer pig. I think you're going to have to do a lot of, uh, I really respect your feelings. I, I want to hear more about how you feel. Um, that's the biggest turn on for a cancer that I've ever seen. Uh, I mean, they just love that. I will and, roger uh, that. Yeah, yeah. You get deep into the feelings and it's all good. Uh, that's so manipulative and Leo of me to have said that to you. And I, I'm, <laughs> I'm so ashamed. And yet, we're such idiots. So I'm sorry. Yeah. Anyway, Devin, you're you know you know this too. Yeah, I know you know. Okay. And then there's Ben and there's L J Boone, but I don't know if they want to play. And they're 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 not in the mood. I think. Uh, okay. I guess that was if that if there's anybody else who wants. Oh, there's L J. There you are. Hi. So, I, hi. I normally don't get on the chats, but I just felt like I didn't want to 
leave the evening without saying how much I appreciate your work and how much I love you. Um, and I give it, I give it as gifts to uh, a couple of friends of mine and they've loved it too. So thank you. So I owe you. No, yeah. you've given me so much more. Thank you for your work. That's kind of you, but I feel like I probably I owe you some dividend or something, you know. <laughs> no, if um, it was a pyramid scheme, I definitely would owe you. Cool. Some. <laughs> okay, um, I am a fire tiger. I think it's another fire tiger in there. So, Ooh. and a Libra. He was also a Libra. You're wow. That's a very ferocious thing to be, I would think, but it's balance. There's balance and fire at the I same time. The other person who said that, I think, was a therapist or was, yeah, something. Oh, he said he's water type. Was it you, Jay Scott? He was a. Yeah, what? it was me. And it turns out that uh, 62 is a year of a water tiger. Right. Water. So, so I am yeah. a water tiger too, but you're a fire tiger. So, water tigers, yeah, that's, uh, we have bond. You know, there's a saying in Chinese um, that, uh they they tend to not want to carry to term girls born in the year of the tiger and they tend to want them to not exist because they say that they will not obey the three important men being the father the husband and the son sounds correct how how <laughs> true is that for you lj sounds very correct yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i know <laughs> tiger tiger women yeah we're like <laughs> Well, I could do what you want me to, or I could just claw your face off. That's another <laughs> thought. <laughs> and I don't know. I have to choose. I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, anyway, I think I made, uh, where's our host? Did he go away? No, there I'm still here. Oh, there he is. Okay. Oh, yeah. I have to anyway, if there's anybody else who wants to share, and I don't want to leave anybody out of the fun, but if we're done, uh, I just really appreciate you all sharing that with me. Well, that was fun to look at you and think about when you were born and under what star. So if there's, I think we're playing a game. Yes, uh, Don, Don does have a link for us here. Don, could you repost okay. the link one more time in the chat? Yeah, let me grab that. Okay, very cool. And um, usually...